Hi everybody, it's Paul. Um, I'm gonna take us through uh, the tying of a double dropper loop rig. Um, I'm going to just do the actual tie creation here today, which consists of the top barrel swivel, um, your first top loop rig or loop, uh, second loop, a little bit further down, and then the bottom being finished off with a snap swivel. Um, I like using snap swivels over the uh, more inexpensive snaps or hooks, however you want to call them. Um, I don't like uh, I don't like these as much because they don't uh, if they're twisting in the water or on the sand or if your sinker isn't holding and you're doing any kind of motion, the the weight flopping over is going to twist twist these up and twist up your your loop rig. Um, if I'm slipping in the sand here and my sinker's sliding, I mean, all the motion's gonna be right here against the barrel, um, and I'm not gonna be twisting up my loop rig. So for a little bit of extra money, to me, it's worth, uh, worth having the actual uh, snap swivels. So, um, so this is what the finished product is, and so now we're gonna start off uh, on the rig board. The, the advantage of having a rig board um, the dimensions, the, the measurements, if you will, all the distances between, between the pegs here um, are detailed in a, in a wonderful video that Chip, the sinker guy, has made. Um, I believe there's a few other, I know uh, Courtney and her husband, uh, Kirk, have uh, created a video on tying these also on their rig board. Um, quite consistently, um, using a rig board, everything, well, not quite consistently. By using a rig board, everything you're tying will be consistent. Everything will be the same size. And uh, I think that's important depending uh, if you're anal like I am. Um, I want everything to be the same. I want the same distances between the hooks. I want the same distance from the bottom loop to where the sinker connects. Um, and then likewise, the distance from the top of the sinker or top of the loop uh, barrel swivel down to your first loop. So anyway, we're going to do Palomar knots and T knots. They're the only two knots involved. And I'm going to start off with a Palomar knot. Uh, so you twist over, poke through your, your swivel, come up and over, bring it back through. So basically you've got a double-sided granny knot there. Um, and then you're bringing that loop back up over your swivel. And now you're bringing everything back down. So I like to just snug it up a little bit here. I'm gonna hit it with uh, some spray water to lubricate. Uh, I pull on the main line, if you will, the, the main stretch of the leader material. And then uh, once I've done that, I use my pliers and to get a good hold, I do a couple wraps on the plier head here. One, two is good enough. And now I give that a good pull. And so now I've got a very solid connection here to this barrel swivel. I can cut off my tag end here pretty much as short as I want. Um, I only leave a little tiny bit there. Uh, probably not even maybe an eighth of an inch. Um, so anyway, I've got that on there now. Now I'm going to come up here to my, my clip. And uh, this clip is a uh, electrical connection, a uh, little alligator clip. And then I took the, uh, the plastic pieces off and put them over top of the teeth. So I don't have any teeth of the alligator clip actually hitting things. And I actually don't even have to open uh, the alligator clip. It just fits between these two plastics. And then uh, the barrel swivels being held in place. So now I can come down go over my first loop up around the top here and what I like to do is the loose end or the end going off to the right here off to the spool of your leader material I like to count that as the top top line it's actually on the top and I use that to count and I'm gonna go four and a half wraps so four meaning Halfway around, all the way around is one, all the way around is two, three, four, and I do a half just to put this line as the pull line back on top for the top here. 
and maybe that'll make a little more sense when you see me do it. So getting around the tripod here for the camera. Um, so um, around one, two, three, four and a half. And now the half is this pull line. I'm gonna come in, go through and come down and pull. And before I pull it snug, I'm gonna hit it again with some water, get that wet. And now I can finish that off with a nice solid tug. And I can put this back over and just pull one side, pull the other side, pull them both together here. And I've got my T-knot. So there's number one. So this now goes up and goes into the connection up here. So now I'm gonna do it again. So around, around, whoops. Round, around, and around. And I'm gonna start with this underline. One, two, three, four, and a half. And again, the top piece here is this loose line and that's gonna open up. I'm gonna put my line through there. I'm gonna come through, start snugging this down a little bit, hit it with some water. Finish it off, give it a little snug here, come off one more time. Pull that way, pull this way. And uh, I don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but we have a nice small, tight, tightly wrapped T-knot. And then also when you're doing this, um, you'll notice that the bottom the bottom is the bottom and the top is the top. I mean, I didn't, there's nothing crisscrossing here. Um, everything is in, uh, in place. So now, so I've got my two loops, the barrel swivel. I'm gonna take my second loop, go to the end of my board here and come down right to where I've measured out for this little eye hook. I put it next to this eye hook, stop, cut. And this is gonna be my final polymer knot for, uh, oops, let's see here. This is gonna be my final polymer knot for the barrels, or for the snap swivel. Come through. back through come through come back over get all of that back through take up a little slack here missed it get some water on it tighten it up hard that's not pulling anymore. Grab my pliers here, do a little wrap, nose wrap. There we go. That's pulled tight. And now I can cut off this tag end. And we're done. We're done with this. Now, usually what I'm doing is I'll, I'll make up a dozen of them just like this. Uh, and I've got a couple little, little brads in the wall over by my trash cans here in the garage. I just hang them up uh, like five per brad. So I'm giving myself about 15 of these before I do a jewelry day. Um, also, when I've had successful jewelry working for me and I want to repeat it and I come home with one a little scuffed up or whatever, I can just grab a blank and just move the jewelry, uh, either replacing the hooks or reusing the hooks. 
Um, I like to uh, be a good steward of my money, so if I don't have to replace anything, I don't. Um, but at the same time, the tiniest indication of any kind of nick or scuff in the line here, uh, it's just too easy to just grab another one and, and, uh, and make the same setup again. So this is what I'm doing uh, time and time again. It's, uh, you know, not being on film and not explaining. I can sit here and tie these pretty quick. And, uh, and then, like I said, when I've got them hanging on the wall, I can see all my knots are side by side by side, both top and bottom loop. And the only thing that's different from uh, every once in a while is how much line I've got to my bottom. Sometimes my polymer knot uses more line or less line. So this bottom one is a little bit variable as far as distance from the bottom loop. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I'm being very anal and very uh, picky about that. I mean, we're not talking much more than uh, uh, maybe not even a full inch difference between any of that. So um, anyway, um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, hopefully I'm going to look at this video and make sure it made sense. And uh, if it didn't make sense, you'll never see this. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Bye.